When it comes to blenders, do you need to spend over $600 to find a good blender, or will the $25 blender work just as well? We have 10 different brands to test today, so let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which blender does the best job converting ice into snow. Then we'll see which blender has enough blade sharpness and speed to break down seeds. We'll see which blender can make the best smoothie. Finally, we'll see which blender can make the smoothest peanut butter. At a price of only $25, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Hamilton Beach. It's a 10-speed blender with 56-ounce capacity. It claims to be designed for making smoothies. It claims to offer smooth results with patented Wave Action System. Powerful 650 watts and durable patented Ice Saber blades to power through ice. We're going to test that. The bottom of the blender is not designed to be disassembled before cleaning. The Hamilton Beach is made in China. The weight of a product is sometimes a good indicator of quality, and the Hamilton Beach weighs a total of 4.07 pounds. And the Hamilton Beach makes 19,801 no-load RPM. 95.6 decibels is pretty loud and 240 no-load watts. In the first test, let's compare how the blenders perform crushing ice. For the blenders that don't have ice crush programs, I'll go ahead and use the pulse feature 10 times. Then I'll give the jar a couple of bumps and give it 10 more pulses. And the Hamilton Beach blades made contact with the ice for about 3 pulses and then the large pieces of ice were out of reach for the blades. And the narrow profile of the jug along with the depressions or dents in the base is not well designed for processing ice. And the Hamilton Beach really struggled in this test leaving mostly large chunks of ice. And the plate with the ice weighs 2.49 pounds and the plate with snow weighs 1.78. At a price of only $26, is this Yabano brand? Includes a pulse mode as well as two different speeds. They claim that their Triton plastic jar has passed the desktop drop test. We're going to test that. The bottom of the container can be disassembled for cleaning. The blade is designed to create a vortex to improve the blending action. The Yabano brand is made in China. Blender can reach 35,000 RPM. And the Yabano has a total weight of 4.21 pounds. The Yabano came up almost 15,000 RPMs less than advertised. 90.7 decibels and 213 watts, which is less than the Hamilton Beach. The Yabano jar has a very large diameter and almost perfectly rounded base, which is really helping the Yabano. And the large diameter base is allowing the ice to move freely and to settle after each pulse. During all 20 pulses, the ice made very good contact with the blades. Only about 10 chunks of large ice with the Yabano, and the snow is fluffy and not packed tight. And the plate with snow weighs 2.455 pounds, which is far better than the Hamilton Beach. At a price of $39, is this Brentwood brand. It claims to offer a powerful 350-watt motor with 12 speeds, including pulse, chop, mix, grate, blend, and liquefy. It includes a 50-ounce plastic jar. The bottom of the jar can be disassembled for cleaning. Cord storage under the base. It claims it can easily crush ice and blend delicious fruit smoothies. The Brentwood is made in China. And the Brentwood is the lightest yet at only 3.52 pounds. Over 17,000 RPM is the slowest yet. 95.8 decibels and only 166 watts. And the blades made pretty good contact with the ice for the first few pulses and then the blades became stuck. And the pulses just aren't doing much to circulate the unprocessed ice. And the Brentwood left behind 15 large pieces of ice. 2.08 pounds is good enough to move into second position behind the Yabano. At a price of $60, is this Civio brand? It claims to make 1,450 watts with four presets. It claims to be designed for shakes, smoothies, crushing ice, and frozen fruits. 68 ounce Triton container. It has a hardened and heavy duty three layer stainless steel blades that are designed to handle the toughest ingredients. It claims to be dependable and not disposable. We're gonna test that. It claims to make 30,000 RPM and 2.25 horsepower. The Civio is made in China. And the Civio is the heaviest yet at 7.3 pounds. And the Civio came up about 3,400 RPM short of its 30,000 RPM rating. And the Civio is the loudest yet at 98.2 decibels and 367 no load watts. And the Civio has a programmed ice crush feature. So this programmed feature should help it perform better than the first three brands. Unfortunately, the square profile of the jug seems to be preventing the ice from circulating freely during the test. As you'd expect, the RPM fluctuated throughout the 40 second test, but the Civio really struggled. Around 20 cues of ice and 2.23 pounds is good enough for third place behind the Brentwood. At a price of $73, is this Want Join brand? Unlike the other blenders, this one claims to be for both home and commercial use. It includes a very powerful 1800 watt motor. It claims it can mince ice in only 10 seconds without adding extra water. It claims it can make up to 30,000 RPM. The Want Joint is made in China. And the Want Joint is the heaviest yet at 8.42 pounds. And the Want Joint came up 7,000 RPM short of its 30,000 RPM rating. 91.8 decibels and 361 watts. And the Want Joint struggled to get started on the first pulse. And the narrow square and wedge shaped profile of the jar is really hurting the Want Joint. After three pulses, the Want Joint's blades are pretty much striking out. 2.39 pounds of ice chunks and the Want Joint is second to last. At a price of $95, is this Ninja brand. It claims to offer 1,000 watts of professional performance power. 72-ounce pitcher is designed for large capacity. It claims to turn ice into snow in just seconds. The Ninja is made in China, and the Ninja weighs 7.3 pounds. Only 5,000 RPM for the Ninja, which is by far the slowest yet. 93.3 decibels and 329 no-load watts. While it's a very minor detail, the Ninja has a parasitic energy draw of 0.6 watts when it's not in use.
No parasitic draw for the previous brands. The Ninja's instructions call for using speed setting too. And the three sets of blades with the Ninja made very easy work of the ice. And the Ninja is finished in very close to 20 seconds and moves into the lead with a full plate of snow and no ice chunks. At a price of $100 is this Cuisinart brand. Includes a 56 ounce BPA free Triton plastic jar. Includes a one horsepower heavy duty motor. Cuisinart claims this blender uses smart power. It has sophisticated electronics to mince delicate herbs, whip up some smoothies, and even chop ice. Easy to clean, removable base. The Cuisinart is made in China. 6.74 pounds for the Cuisinart. 24,300 RPM for the Cuisinart. 600 watts with an empty jar and 96.3 decibels. Just like the want join, the Cuisinart has a programmed ice crush function. And the Cuisinart did a great job for about one second. And the blades are housed in a narrow space beneath a much larger diameter container above. 2.41 pounds is the second to last position. At a price of $105 is this BioChef brand. Six preset programs as well as pulse and variable speed buttons. It has a powerful 1600 watt motor. It has a 67 ounce BPA free jug. Advanced Japanese stainless steel blade system operating at 23,000 RPM. The BioChef is made in China. And the BioChef is the heaviest yet at 9.35 pounds. And the BioChef did great at 3600 RPM better than advertised. It does have a small parasitic draw and 428 no load watts. 98.8 .8 decibels is the loudest yet. And the BioChef has a program programmed ice mode feature, and the blender did great for about a second. Just like several of the other brands, the narrow wedge-shaped profile of the jar really hurt its performance. Unfortunately, the BioChef did a little bit worse than the Cuisinart to move into second to last position. Also, the price of $105, the same price as the BioChef, is this Nutribullet brand. Includes a powerful 1500 watt motor. Includes four different design programs, three blending speeds, and pulse control. The pitcher includes a locking lid and an easy pour spout. The base of the blender includes suction cups to keep the blender from moving around. The Nutribullet is made in China. And the Nutribullet weighs 8.5 pounds. 23,600 RPM for the Nutribullet. 0.3 watts of parasitic draw and 441 no load watts. A fairly quiet blender at 90.7 decibels. And the Nutribullet doesn't have a programmed ice mode. And the Nutribullet just about bit the bullet when the blades became stuck with the ice. After several attempts to free the Nutribullet, it finally began making snow. And the large diameter blades did a great job of reaching the ice chunks as they fell to the bottom. Only about two and a half pieces of ice to move into second place behind the Ninja. At a price of $630, the most expensive blender we'll be testing is made by Vitamix. It's a Series 750. Low profile 64 ounce container. Includes five program settings. Powerful 1440 watt motor. Includes aircraft grade stainless steel blades. The Vitamix is made in USA. And the Vitamix is by far the heaviest yet at 12.73 pounds. Around 22,160 RPM. There's no parasitic draw and 411 no load watts. 92.3 decibels is less noise than most of the other brands. Just like the BioChef, the Vitamix has a very large diameter blade that has a lot of reach. And the Vitamix made very good contact with the ice for all 20 pulses. And there's only one large piece of ice at 1.695 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Ninja. Subtracting the weight of the glass plate, the Ninja came out on top without any unprocessed ice. The Vitamix finished in second at 0.025 pounds of unprocessed ice and Nutribullet 0.045. Let's compare power and blade speed next using two cups of water and chia seeds. The blenders will have right at one minute to pulverize the seeds. As the test gets closer to the one minute mark, the mix will become very thick and really put the blender design to the test. And it didn't take long before the Hamilton Beach began to struggle. The motor just doesn't make enough power to maintain a high RPM under load. And the motor only made 318 watts. Most of the chia seeds survived without any noticeable impact from the blender. And the chia seeds are way too large to pass through the strainer. The Yabano started off just as ambitious as the Hamilton Beach. And the Yabano seems to have done a better job at maintaining a high RPM throughout the entire test. 319 peak watts is about the same as the Hamilton Beach. And the Yabano definitely did a better job of breaking down the seeds. Unfortunately, the seeds are still too large to pass through the strainer and the Yabano left behind a lot of unfinished business. At only 350 watts, the Brentwood has the least powerful electric motor rating. And the Brentwood peaked at 360 watts during the test. Unfortunately, the blender lost a lot of blade speed near the end of the test. Most of the seeds are still too large to pass through the strainer, but the Brentwood did perform better than the Hamilton Beach. And the Civio makes over 26,000 no load RPM, a lot more than the first three brands. And the Civio started out strong and maintained RPM better than the first three brands throughout the entire test. 685 watts is about twice as much as the previous brands. And some of the seeds are actually passing through the strainer without any assistance, but I'll add some water to speed up the process. While there is some unfinished business, the Civio has done by far the best job yet. Just like the Civio, the wine joint started off strong and is making very good RPM. The wine joint made it to 670 watts are very close to the same as the Civio. And the blender was still maintaining very good blade speed near the end of the test. Just like the Civio, the seeds are flowing through the strainer. 
However, the one joint didn't perform quite as well as a Civia with quite a few large seeds. At only 5,000 RPM, the Ninja has by far the slowest spinning blades in the lineup. However, the Ninja also has three rows of blades, which might help. And the Ninja only made it to 360 watts, which is not a good sign. Unfortunately, the Ninja just doesn't make enough blade speed to break down the seeds as well as some of the other brands. And the strainer is plugged and adding water to the mix isn't helping. The seeds processed by the Hamilton Beach is on the left and the Ninja on the right. And the very affordable Hamilton Beach blender actually outperformed the Ninja. And it didn't take long before the Cuisinart turned the mix into a slurry. And the Cuisinart made it to 716 watts the most yet. And the seeds aren't flowing through the strainer nearly as fast as they were with the Civio. So the Cuisinart and the Want joint performed very close to the same on this test. And the BioChef made over 26,000 RPM, which should really help on this test. And the BioChef made it to 651 watts and maintained very good blade speed throughout the entire test. Just like the Civio, the seeds are flowing through the strainer quickly. While there is some unfinished business, the BioChef has done the best so far. And the neutral bullet is off to a pretty strong start with the seeds in the water forming a slurry very quickly. And the blender made it to 1022 watts the most yet. And the neutral bullet maintained very good blade speed throughout the entire test. And the results from the neutral bullet as well as the BioChef are very close to the same. And the Vitamix started off strong and almost immediately made it to 900 watts. And the water and the seeds form a slurry very quickly. And the Vitamix finally made it to 1058 watts the most yet. And the seeds are flowing through the strainer the fastest yet without any assistance. And the Vitamix has done by far the best yet with almost all the seeds flowing through the strainer. While assessing performance is highly subjective, the Vitamix earned the highest possible rating of A+. The BioChef and the Nutribullet each earned an A rating. In the next test, let's see how the blenders perform making a very thick smoothie consisting of two cups of blueberries, chia seeds, greens, and two cups of water. I'll measure out the exact amount of ingredients before testing each blender. To perform well in this test, the blenders are going to need a lot of blade speed to pulverize the chia seeds and the frozen blueberries. And the Hamilton Beach doesn't come with a tamper, so I'll borrow one and hopefully keep from hitting the blades. And the Hamilton Beach is really struggling to maintain RPM. And it's been right at two and a half minutes. And there's still some frozen blueberries on top and the chia seeds survive without too much harm. Unfortunately, the Hamilton Beach just doesn't make enough power to perform well on this test. Just like the Hamilton Beach, the Yabano is losing a lot of RPM and blade speed. Without adequate blade speed, the chia seeds are going to be an issue. After two and a half minutes, the Yabano did a little bit better than the Hamilton Beach. While there aren't any blueberries visible from the top of the container, the blender performed poorly on the chia seeds. So the Yabano performed a little bit better than the Hamilton Beach. And the breadwood is only rated for 350 watts, and it really bogged down trying to process the smoothie mix. And the lack of blade speed is a big problem for the Brentwood. After two and a half minutes, there's still a lot of floating blueberries. Unfortunately, the Brentwood didn't perform quite as well as the Hamilton Beach or the Yabano. And the Civio has a programmed smoothie mode. And the design of the Civio's jar really seems to be an issue. The blades just aren't making consistent contact with the smoothie mix. And the Civio performed about the same as the Hamilton Beach with a few surviving blueberries and a lot of intact chia seeds. For a blender that claims to have an 1800 watt motor, the Want Join really struggled to maintain enough blade speed at the start of the test. After about a minute and a half, the Want Join finally began processing the smoothie without help from the tamper. And the Want Join smoothie has very good consistency. There aren't any floating blueberries, and the chia seeds are mostly pulverized. So the Want Join has done the best yet. And the Ninja only makes around 5,000 no load RPM. So cutting through the chia seeds is really going to be a challenge for the Ninja. About a minute into the test, I stopped the blender and used a tamper to free stuck contents to help the Ninja. While the Ninja did a great job with the blueberries, it just doesn't make enough blade speed to process seeds. And the Cuisinart has a smoothie mode. Unfortunately, the Cuisinart doesn't come with a tamper, so I'll borrow one from the competition. And the Cuisinart performed better than most of the other blenders, but not quite as well as the Want Join. No surviving blueberries, but it didn't break down the seeds as well as the Want Join. And the BioChef makes a lot of no-load RPM at over 26,000. About midway through the test, the BioChef began processing the smoothie without any help from the tamper. Just like the Want Join, the BioChef did a great job processing the smoothies, and most of the chia seeds are broken down as well. So the Want Join and the BioChef have done the best so far. Far. And the neutral bullet seems to be doing the best yet at maintaining a high blade speed under load. And the blender began processing the smoothie without help from the tamper about midway through the test. And the smoothie seems to be a pretty nice and smooth consistency. And the neutral bullet seems to have done the best so far at breaking down the berries and seeds. And the Vitamix has a smoothie mode like several of the other brands. And the Vitamix made very good blade speed and made very easy work of the smoothie in only 45 seconds compared to two and a half minutes for the competition. Very nice consistency and the Vitamix did well breaking down the berries and seeds. Assessing blender performance is subjective, but the Want Joint, BioChef, Nutribullet, and Vitamix all received the highest possible rating. Let's move on to our most challenging test yet, turning 1.5 pounds of peanuts into peanut butter. And the Hamilton Beach really struggled on this test from the very start. 
and the blender lost a lot of blade speed throughout the entire 2.5 minute test. Fortunately, the blender survived and there's no smoke coming from the motor. And the blades hitting peanuts causes the kinetic energy to transform into heat. Let's see if higher temperatures correlates with better performance. 100 degrees and this is some really crunchy peanut butter. So the Hamilton Beach really struggled in this test. And the Yabano bogged down pretty badly from the start of the test and stayed bogged down throughout. So the blade speed was definitely a problem for the Yabano. The Yabano does have a better designed jar for this task and it definitely performed better than the Hamilton Beach by breaking down the peanuts to smaller chunks. Very close to 103 degrees. And the Brentwood has the least powerful motor in the lineup. And the motor was pushed beyond its design throughout the entire test and I could smell smoke. Fortunately, the blender motor survived the test, and the Brentwood actually performed just as well as the Yabano, breaking down the peanuts to form a peanut butter with some grit. 96 degrees. And the Civio's electric motor makes a lot more torque than the first three brands. And the blender is off to a great start, quickly breaking down the nuts. Compared to the first three brands, the Civio is definitely doing a much better job of processing the peanut butter with assistance from the tamper. 127 degrees, and the peanut butter almost made it to a creamy consistency, but it still has some grit. And the watt joint seems to be struggling more at the start of the test compared to the Civio. A look inside the jar and the watt joint isn't processing the peanut butter nearly as well as the Civio. And the watt joint performed almost as well as the Civio forming mostly smooth peanut butter with a small amount of grit. 115 degrees are about 12 degrees lower than the Civio. Peanuts are a lot easier to break down in seeds and this really helped the Ninja perform well in this test. Having three rows of blades is really helping the Ninja break down the peanuts without any assistance from a tamper. The Ninja left behind some unfinished business on the side of the jar, but most of the peanut butter looks really good. And the Ninja performed fairly well in this test, but the peanut butter is a little grittier compared to the Civio. 112 degrees. And a Cuisinart motor became pretty bogged down during the start of the test. And the blender motor and jar design just didn't perform nearly as well as some of the other brands during the test. And the peanut butter is still pretty gritty with a few large peanuts still in the mix. 104 degrees after two and a half minutes. Using the program setting for the nuts, the BioChef started off strong and didn't seem to need nearly as much help as some of the other brands. And pockets of air formed around the blades as the peanut butter formed and this slowed the progress of the BioChef. And the BioChef definitely performed better than the Cuisinart, but it did leave more of a gritty texture compared to the Civio. 111 degrees is about the same as the Ninja. Without the tamper in place, the neutral bullet was tossing peanuts out of the jar during the beginning of the test. And the blender held a pretty high RPM throughout the entire test. And the neutral bullet did the best yet with creamy peanut butter and a very small amount out of gritty texture. Not bad for two and a half minutes of effort. 134 degrees is the warmest yet. Using the program setting for nuts, the Vitamix started off strong and didn't need too much assistance from the tamper. There weren't any issues with air pockets forming around the blades during the test. And two and a half minutes was definitely more than enough time for the Vitamix and the peanut butter is definitely the smoothest with the least amount of grit. 148 degrees is the highest temperature yet. So the Vitamix definitely came out on top with the highest possible rating of A+, but the Nutribullet also performed almost as well with the rating of A. Considering the price, the Civio also performed well with a B plus rating. I also drop tested all the jars and they all survived without damage. So which blender is best? The Vitamix came out on top with the best average finish of 1.3. Considering the price, the Nutribullet also performed very well with an average finish of second place. And several brands averaged a fourth place finish. All of the blenders are organized from least expensive to most expensive. If you're in the market for a blender, hopefully this information will help you make an informed decision. And the Vitamix is a very nice blender, but $600 is a lot of money for a blender. I always buy all the products in this channel just to ensure unbiased reviews. So once again, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Also, all the videos in this channel are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.